So in Nomad, a few versions ago, we got the ability to use post-processing and that made it really, really cool to do things like depth of field and some of the, you know, the cooler effects like curvature and, and really affecting the look of the scene. But what it didn't do is anything to do with things like refraction or reflection. You can see there on these eyes on this on this model with these glasses, this has now got ref refraction and it's bending the line. So you need to go into the material tab. So let's explore what's in here and see how we can use these features in uh, um, something like a pair of glasses. So what better way to look at glass and refraction than a pair of glasses? So we've got a head here sculpted in Nomad. We've got post-processing on up here. So you can see that I've got um, quality up, reflection is on. I've got ambient occlusion on, which will give us those darker, dark areas. I've got depth of field on. I've got, um, let me go all the way down. I've not got much on there and I've got a bit of grain on just to give me some, uh, I find grain helps me with the skin. So that, that's how the head is set up. We've got a three point light rig with one of the lights coming from the bottom and not really doing too much from the bottom. Um, the hair is just done with single polygons um, and as you can see the depth of field is helping there because it blurs it out. And then on the glasses what we've got is we just made them with tubes so if you know the tube tool it's very very simple you just draw out the tube and um, you just literally let's do it. You would draw out the tube like so one two three four five set the width like this with the green button and you can play with it like that and you can move it around. So the, the um, glasses are just made of tubes like that. So they're super simple. And then we've got this in the middle, which is the lens. And that's the most important bit. Now we've made two pieces of glass, they're both lenses, and we've made them completely convex. Um, and that means that you can see there, they bend at the back and the front. And that's quite important. If you just make a cylinder, that wouldn't reflect how a real piece of glass is because there'll be no bend in it at all. So remember to make sure you've got curved glass like that. So how do we make it glass and how do we make it refractive and reflective and all of the good things that we want? So it's all up here, basically in the material tab. So at the moment, you've got it set to opaque, which means it's you can't see through it at all. It's not translucent at all. So the options are you've got additive, you've got blending, dithering and refraction. Now, obviously, with what we're going to do, we want refraction. And straight away, just by turning on refraction, there you go. You can see you've got glass, so it's transparent, it's see-through. But can you see, as I move around, there's hardly any change in the image. And that means that there's not much refraction going on. Um, it is working. It is bending the light, because after all, refraction is a lens bending light as you see it. So we would expect those eyes to be a little off as they are here on this right hand side. You can see them being off a little bit, but we need to play with the settings a bit. So just putting it on as a default is not good enough. If you roll around now, that's not reflecting and it's not refracting enough. So to enhance what we're doing, what we should do is uh, put the little pin on and that keeps the material sphere open. And then if we look down here, we've got quite a few things to start talking about. So first of all, we've got the index of refraction. And if I zoom in, you'll see that this is this is one of the big ones. So the index of refraction shows how much that light is going to bend. So if I, I roll it around to the side and watch here and watch here, and you'll see now that that is bending the light more and more. So we've got a great way to control how much of a bend in that glass. Now that will be different for a glass than it is to a bent piece of um, lens like this. So you, you probably want to play with that on a few different shapes. And remember, this is a real-time render engine. So this isn't like a, 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 um, a, a full ray tracer that'll give you you know, real world physics. This, this is doing the best it can, and it's amazing. But if you want to get to that level, go into something like Blender with Cycles or, or Redshift or, or any of the more advanced renderers. For us, this gives us an approximation of, of, of what we want to show in our, in our images. So if you've got your index of refraction right, you could put Paint Glossy on. And Paint, paint Glossy basically just says it will paint an object's roughness and metalness at zero thus allowing a sharp refraction. It's the same as going into the painting menu and using the paint 
using all the paint features with the color and metal metalness disabled and that means it's like going in here and changing any of these parameters in here so i, I i've made mine a, a slightly bluey color so paint glossy i'm not overly sure why it won't highlight so i'd have to check that but what it actually does is it's the same as coming down here and setting your roughness and your metalness to zero and that basically means it won't be um using the, the the roughness or the metalness so it's taken the roughness out completely and it's obviously you don't want any metal look in the glass anyway so so absorption is crucial so absorption is where you ha when the light passes through the glass the thicker areas kind of absorb it and the thinner areas don't because it, obviously the light's passing through more more of the object so we would have that on and we would have that quite high not not too high. See so how it goes darker in the centre and thinner, like lighter and bluier or greener at the at the edges, and we can play with that later on. And you've got two factors to play with there, so you can change the colour and you've changed the factor as well. So I've got mine set to this bluey green colour, so we'll leave that as it is. You can experiment with that. So if you've got like an amber glass, like a wine, like a whiskey glass, for example, a tumbler, then you might want to put a little bit more reds and golds in there. Or if you want to have a really coloured piece of glass or, or, or stained glass or something like that, then, you know, go crazy with it. So the override painting, is, it gives you a surface glossiness and an interior glossiness. Now, the interior of the model, um, we don't want any anything on there. So the interior roughness, put that all the way to zero. And the surface, we'll change that a little bit later on, but we'll keep it low. So all the way down to zero will be off and then all the way to one. So for example, with the interior roughness, if you went to one, it just makes it completely opaque, which is obviously not what we want at all. So keep them low, if not off. Always unlit, don't touch it because it will give you that. And that is that is great where that just gives you a, um, a, an emissive uh, texture ba or shader, basically. And it just gives you a solid block of colour. So, we, you know, we don't we definitely don't want that for here. OK, so now we've got a couple more options and we're going to go back over some of these and tweak them. I'm just explaining them a little bit now. So with casting shadows, we want them on. So you can see there now the glass is casting the shadow onto the face and glass does cast a shadow. So we do want that on there. And if you roll the light around a little bit, you can see there that's helping because it's giving that nice cast shadow down here underneath the cheek. So if you turn it off, it's not as not as prominent when the lights are away, but when the lights are close, you can see that 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 has a that that can have quite a dramatic effect, um, depending on where you know depending on that light position it, it matters. So we'll leave that on. Two sided we want on, and that makes a big difference there. So two sided is two sided is two sides of the polygons. So that means that we're getting um, a refraction from a number of places, and it and it really does seem to make a big difference. So if you go to certain angles like that and then turn that off, it just doesn't look anywhere near as good. And you can see straight away there, the difference between off and on with two-sided. So it, you know, it, it only use, I only use two-sided when it's um, something like a visor um, or a piece of glass where you don't want too much distortion. But if you want it to look like realistic light bending through glass, then I would say put it on. Do you see this pixelization here? I don't know whether you can see it that well from uh, from the screen recording, but that's because the background is low res and we can't change that, unfortunately. So always try and angle it to a position where you're not seeing the blockiness of the, of the, the HDRI uh, around the scene. And the last couple of things, so smooth shading we want on, and that'll smooth shade the glass. And then wireframe, obviously, we don't want any wireframe on, so that leave that permanently off. And that's that's all the parameters you've got to play with. So I'm just going to go back over them now and just play with them a little bit. So the surface gloss, I'm not going to worry too much about that. I'm, two fingers, I'm rolling the lights and the HDRI around. So I'm looking for a, a nice shot of the HDRI that really shows it reflecting in the glass. And if you don't like it, or if you're not enjoying that, then just come up here and let's have a look and change. So we've, we've got that environment on, let's change it to something a bit more radical. So let's change it to, what about this dark one? Let's try that. That's an indoor scene now. And you can see the, the glass bending from the, from the ref reflection of the windows. So that's completely changed the look of this model just by changing the HDRI in the background. So let's just see if we can find a, a you know a, a look that we like. I don't like that green light in a lot of the scenes, so let's let's try and do it like 
that perhaps so it's quite dramatic no nope, still don't like it just be bringing that back like that so now we can see, there we go so now we can really see the reflection of the environment in the glass so as we change the settings now we're going to see that change quite a lot so let's go in and let's change our um keep obviously interior roughness is completely down surface glossiness we'll keep that um it doesn't really make a big difference on this particular lighting environment now and the absorption i'm going to bring that down a bit so let's let's bring the factor down you can see it getting lighter there on the edge so we, you, you could actually turn that off and and you can see the difference there but i like the way that it that it makes it darker in some places and lighter in others so I, I do think that that's got some merit to being on so let's have a look at how much how much refraction is going on so it's not a huge amount and remember we didn't change the index of refraction too much which is here up at the top so let's increase that a bit now so we're up let's keep it all the way at the top actually and see if Bring it back a bit. Just seeing it from different angles, just see if it's bending it in, in a way that you want. So if I move this around and then move the light around, you're getting a good feel for it. So that's looking good. And then the only other thing that I might want to change is, is I'll just up the factor again. So that's the absorption factor there. And then if I bring that light back a bit, not too much what i might actually do is just move the lighting itself not the not the hdri but the actual lighting of the scene so i'm moving this light around now just doing it with my finger there as well and that's going to give me a bit more of, of a refraction and a reflection on this part here so if you just move that around now you can see exactly what i did there and it's, it's just giving it a little bit more of a pop it helps with this metal and it helps with the refraction on the glass as well and now you can see there, as I roll around now, you can see how much that light is bending. So it's really, it's not popping out. So it's not making it so that this eye looks like it's sticking out like it was doing on this side. So let's have a roll around now and have a look. So you can see the refraction is really popping here. So you can see how the light is bending around. And it might get to the point, see there where it's erroring, it's actually refracting that nose through the eye. So that's probably gone too far in some places, so we might need to change that. And now we can turn this white line off, which was the outline. And you can see there it has definitely gone too far because it's, ref it's, it's reflecting and refracting. So what can we change? So we'll bring that index of refraction down now and we'll bring it so that it's about there. And that means that the image isn't repeating into, the, into itself then. It just looks like it's a reflection of the metal on the glass. And that's how I got the look there. So there's a tiny bit of refraction in there. It's reflecting the scene. So you're seeing that pass, that, that you're seeing the lights pass around um, the front of the lens. And you can see how bent the lens is, which is why I said don't use a cylinder. And I think quite close up now that stands up um, as, as being quite, you know, nice just enough re refraction and just enough reflection and of course you can do tons and tons of things to this you know you don't have to use any of the settings that i've said so this is one that will take a little bit of playing with you, you know you, if you do water it'll be totally different if you do you know plain glass it'll be very different than colored glass so there are lots of different things that you can factor in while you while you're learning this but overall that's a great way to to really make your images pop if they've got some glass in them and it can be used for so many different things. I hope you're enjoying these videos. And if you are, please give it a thumbs up. We've just hit 21,000 subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. With a million views now on the channel, we actually feel like we're really, really helping people to make stuff in new and innovative ways. So a thumbs up does motivate us to do more. Please subscribe to the channel, help us build even more. And don't forget, we teach all of this in our Nomad classes and all the details can be found down below in the description where you can see what we've got available and what offers we've got on at the moment. Have a great week, everyone.